Ooh, welcome back to the BDG Fantasy Football YouTube channel. Today is Thursday, which means we are talking about trades. Guys, you need to go trade for. Guys, you need to get the fuck off your fantasy football team because players are flying, players are moving. We're going through the 10 most traded players in fantasy, which probably is relevant to your league and probably relevant to some of your rosters. This data is per fantasycalc.com. They pull in through Sleeper and a bunch of different APIs to pull in the most actual traded players in real fantasy football leagues. Now, some of these are overlaps from last week, so we won't go through those same guys again because a lot of this stuff is going to be kind of out, not outdated, but like redundant if we keep talking about the same points over and over again. So we will only touch on the players that we haven't talked about yet. And then we'll probably uh, talk about some players that maybe we think you should go target or just get off your team that are overperforming, underperforming at the end of the video. So let's start off hot and fresh with Mr. Jalen Waddle down there at number 10. Of course, the big news here is going to be they lose their quarterback. Tua is now gone for a month, maybe six weeks, maybe eight weeks, whatever the case may be. That lands us in a weird spot with the Miami Dolphins uh, wide receivers. Now, are you guys buying, selling, or holding on Jalen Waddle? He Be gone. Sell skis. I'm all right. Him. What you doing? I mean, I never really left here. I was never really all that in. Okay. You know, no one convinced me. And now, unfortunately, like, there's not – for me, not a discussion. I, I, it, it, I don't know if you can sell the problem, though. Like, doesn't everybody feel the same way? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I have – like I said, I, I like Waddle, but, like, I had very little – confidence in him being consistent week to week and now with Skyler I kind of feel like the the great part about that offense was the deep shots down the field and to a say what you want him as a quarterback he has some touch on on his deep throws so like yeah that felt that felt good for a while I don't think you're getting that with Skyler I do think Jalen Waddle will become more consistent though consistently, consistently bad. bad yeah that's why we want to get him off our team I don't really know what you can sell him for right now just because everyone's in the same boat where it's like okay maybe you can find someone who thinks two is going to come back over the second half of the year and I'm I'm almost in that boat I do think Tua plays again this year but you gotta gotta uh, factor that risk in there when you're playing the, the one thing I think um in a you know season sprint is like the, if you're gonna pivot off of him I think the 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 fallacy is like all right now I'm gonna try to trade Jalen Waddle at his old cost and get a player that has name cash and everybody still likes that, that, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. But I think what you can probably do is what most people don't want to do is get risky, a player that was drafted much later than Waddle, that you can p pencil in right now and like, it's a little scary, but this could actually be way better than the situation Waddle's in. I don't hate that at all. Uh, I don't think people would give up Jamison Williams, but I think that's the right line of thinking. What that's about it. like a Rashid Shahid? Shahid probably feels, I think anyone listening probably immediately in their soul felt like, no, it's too, it's too low. I mean, that, that's risky, to be honest, because we only have two-week sample size of the Saints kind of going ham. Yeah. But to me, well, I'm, is it, isn't Jalen Waddle still going to be in the current situation with Skyler kind of similar, like lower volume but big upside? Maybe. My, 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 I guess, thinking was that, like, his upside felt as if it was tied to Tua being able to throw the deep ball a little bit. So they don't gain – it doesn't feel like they have a really game plan for Jalen Waddle. Where it, it feels a little bit like in Philly, where it's like they have a clear alpha – Devontae Smith, really good player, but seems to always get scraps. Like, they never go into the game plan with him being like, he's going to be the one that gets the main targets here. And now with A-Chan in the picture, it feels like he is the second weapon that they're using. And he, he, he gets the targets a lot more easily than Waddle does. So that's my other concern. Like, yeah. we haven't really had a, uh, a weapon out of the backfield that's commanded targets in the way that A-Chan is this year, which, which doubly scares me. For sure. Yeah, I uh, I said hold, and really the only reason why I say that is because I don't think you can get anything of value for Waddle, really. But let's say if you can sell Waddle for Shahid, would you? No. No? Would you? Uh, what was the other player you mentioned? I, I was Jameson Williams. I was checking That's fantasy happening. calc, so like I'd probably not on fantasy calc, which is what we're pulling from. Like if you go to their trade values page. Like, right where uh, Waddle is, it's like Diggs, DJ Moore, Drake London. You're not getting any of those guys. No, it's going to be a little Keep bit going, delayed, obviously. Going. Puka, probably not. But would you consider maybe moving and buying the injury of Puka? Probably, uh, probably not. I don't think so either there, no. I'll Zay take the Flowers, not going to happen. Nope. Keep going. J-Mo, I don't think that'll happen. J would you do it for J-Mo? Because I know you're going to be torn, it sounds like. Probably. I would take J-Mo. I think it's pretty easy, J-Mo. Yeah. T Higgins? I would take T. I don't think I would take T. Really? I okay. So. so we have something there. Pickens. I think T. Higgins plays this week, and then he's fine. Pickens for Waddle. Ain't no chance I'm giving up Pickens for and Waddle. And then you're in, like, Calvin Ridley, McLaurin, Shahid. Okay, Cooper. Ridley, I think, is a good target. I, People I, don't like Ridley, Ridley but he's been the, performing well. Ridley's literally the next name up here. Okay, so we can just dive right into that. <laughs> Ridley and, and Waddle, where I don't, I don't think Ridley's really anything special right now, but he's still getting, like, alpha targets I'd in that him. offense yeah. and producing kind of... 
pretty well. I'll, I'll take I would take Ridley over Waddle for sure. I wouldn't. And here's my reasoning is is maybe I'm optimistic on Tua. Maybe I'm optimistic on the whole situation as you know, as it is. I would not be super surprised if four, six weeks down the line, two is back under center the rest of the way. No. So, so I would I would put yeah, I, I think he plays again this year. So for sure. you saying, you know, find the guy maybe to sell to that you know, believes that Tua will be here back down the stretch. Maybe I'm the guy. You are the guy, yeah. If you're willing to give me, you know, your waddle for my Calvin Ridley, I guess I'm buying from you. Well, uh, okay. I mean, I, I think the conversation there is, while I'll take Ridley, most most people's teams right now are not because of just the sheer number and volume of problems that are happening in fantasy football, are not in the situation to give a Ridley without feeling more secure than that. So if you if you're – if you're selling me on Waddle being good in four to six weeks, that could be great for a lot of teams, but your team may be cooked by the time that fucking matters. That's the problem. Sure. You know? Yep. Like, four to six weeks, you know how much is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, if I'm 2-0 and right now and somebody offers me that. You take it? I'm taking it. Okay. Because I feel like even with Waddle, I mean, we still had him today, like, top 25 wide receiver, top 30 wide receiver. So, like, you know, you're not going to get those top 12 weeks, that type of upside out of him. I mean, you had him there today, but this week, will uh, a lot of it will hinge on this week. I, if he I, goes out and goes four for 16, a touchdown, people are going to be like, okay, he's a wide receiver too. If he goes but then if he goes fucking three for 25, now he's like wide receiver 40 in your rankings going forward. But then your ability to buy him for Ridley or buy him for those guys is now shut. You I can't do that I don't anymore. think that's true, though. You don't think Jaylen so? Waddle, what, give me what what's his weekly upside? What's a good game for like Waddle? Points? I think four for sixty and a touchdown would be a good week. Right. So I think like that's kind of his upside here. And I don't think that okay, if he goes if he goes out and goes four for sixteen and a touchdown, I'm still not ranking him next week that much higher than like wide receiver twenty eight. What if he did what if he was like more like we, what if he was five for a hundred and a touchdown? I would be surprised. That's I, why I was asking, like, I guess I don't think that's the upside case in his bag, but maybe he does, and he would surprise me, and I'd be like, I, okay, cool. Maybe the reason I'm, I say that is I think I think we were in line where if he did do that, though, like if he went out and actually had five catches, 100 yards, touchdown on seven, eight targets, I'd be surprised. But at that point, I'd be like, okay, I was wrong on my assessment. I yeah. think now I'd be sure. a lot more confident. Yeah. I just but I don't, that's what he's got to do I think do he's got a lot more to, to lose in the ranking of having him, like, wide receiver 28, 30, than he does the game. Sure. I, I think just for the way that I view Waddle at the moment is – and maybe it's maybe it's wrong. Maybe I'm being too optimistic. But I just feel like I'm not debating benching Waddle. But some of those other names that we mentioned, speci- uh, specifically like later down that list, I'm actually like making start sit decisions for those guys. Are you okay. benching Ridley? Uh, I'm debating it this okay. week. Okay, that's where we're different. Like I'm I'm okay benching Waddle this week if I have better okay. options. Yeah, yeah, because I, sure. I think I had Ridley in my rankings this week in like the 30s, so I had Waddle higher than Ridley this week. Yeah, he might. Be, they're they're pretty close for me, but. I don't think I'd be even considering benching Ridley yeah. right now. But, yeah, overall, I mean, if you can sell him for the price that is there on Calc, then, you know, I'll sell. But I'm not expecting to get that price. And if I'm trying to sell my Waddle for Ridley or, or Shahid or those guys, I think I'm just going to hold him. I, I think at Shahid, I, I, you could definitely hold. I, I probably would try to hold just because. Um, like McLaurin it, and that, those Rashid, guys? Like, Rashid seems on. like a guy that – now, McLaurin I'm not doing. But yeah. Rashid seems like a guy that you could – potentially still get if Waddle had a bad week. I think that's a trade that could happen. I'm not saying I would take Shahid over Waddle either the rest of the season, but I, th- I think that's probably in the range where it's like if you want to get off Waddle, you can. that could be the risk you could take there where it's actual practical maybe but advice. Right. Do you think that if you know Waddle does go out and have a stinker this week or whatever, he does the three for 25 or whatever you're talking about, then you think you can go get the Ridley deal next week? I think it'll still be there. Really? Really. I think it'll still be there. Okay. Maybe. I guess, yeah. I, I don't. I guess, Ridley. no, it's, I, maybe because we're talking about, okay, the dude who thinks two is coming back <clears throat> and that's why you're buying Waddle. Now what happens right now doesn't matter. Well, right. I, and you're one week closer to a tour. Maybe. I, yeah. I, I think that right now, the Tennessee Titans were in a situation week one, right? Where the Bears played so bad. They, they should, the Bears should not have freaking won that game, right? Will Levis threw them out of that game, literally. Right. But they weren't in a situation where they're throwing a lot. Then this week for the, versus the Jets, you look better for Ridley. I think they're going to play Green Bay this week. And it, they're going to go into next week now playing, actually, Miami. And you're going to have that game where they're playing Miami where Skylar Thompson – People don't feel very good about that situation. Yeah, it's, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. I think last week for Ridley is more on the high end of things. He's not going to get those two touchdowns every week and things sure, like that. Sure, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We'll I, just, I just I think his role is pretty solidified as the one. What that means being yes. attached to Levis is – It's inconsistent. Right, it's super inconsistent. But yeah. at least he's getting, like, Terry, the one. Like, he's not getting any valuable targets. You know, he's yeah. not getting downfield shots. Like, Ridley actually looks pretty good when you watch him play. He looks yeah. fast. He looks, you know – Good, but like the Explosive. offense is going to hold them down a little yeah, bit. So I agree. Um, yeah, so we talked about Ridley. We talked about Jalen Waddle. The next guy up on this list is a fun one, Brian Robinson, who just went nuclear uh, against the New York Giants. 
He ran for over, I believe, 125 yards. He's getting a ton of carries. Even with that, Eckler's like playing really well too. So it's kind of a, a, a fun ground game that they got going on at Washington at the moment. This was easy for me. How easy? This easy. Yeah, he's a buy, buy, hold buy. I mean, it's kind of tough to feel to feel out like what you would actually be able to trade him for. He kind of seems like a guy that hasn't risen enough and redraft rankings that where people are going to want to move him. Want me to like, look tr- tr- to trade him away? Here you go. Uh, running back wise, he's pinched between Rashad White. J.K. Dobbins, Najee Harris, DeAndre Swift. I'm taking over all those guys. I kind of feel like that's pretty a pretty reasonable spot. I think I would take him over almost everybody. I think him and Dobbins is a pretty good debate. I'm him pretty. And White? I'll I think take, I'd lean him over White. I think I, I would too. White. Yep, agreed. And I over mean, Najee and over Swift. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about week one, 12 carries for 40 yards, got the goal line score touchdown, but also three catches, 49 yards last week. Their game plan was obviously to run all over New York. 17 carries, 133 yards, three targets, but only one for three. He's just a consistent, very large piece of that offense. And that offense came into the year like they're a horizontal rate offense, but they want to run the ball a lot. And I think, you know, they're not always going to have that game plan in place, but running behind Jane Daniels also opens up a lot of holes. It does, and I I like the the subtle involvement in the receiving game. Like he's giving you a little bit here in the PPR formats as well just because he's catching two or three or four footballs. I think that's always the the hesitancy here is like having Eckler there, kind of like what you said with Ramondre. Like this is the new workhorse style of running back in the NFL. It's like as as much as Austin Eckler is there catching four or five passes a game, if Robinson's getting 18 touches, like you're not going to find much better than okay, that. Okay, so what about cross positionally? If you traded Robinson for a wide receiver, you have Jaden Reed, Calvin Ridley, Xavier Worthy, T. Higgins. Robinson. Over all of them? I mean, especially based on what we said or what we're, we were kind of saying about Jaden Reed. I'm still weirdly – I'm still in on Higgins because we're, we're past the two weeks of him missing at this point where I think it's only up to go for there. So if we're docking him for like not – he missed his time already. So if you're able to trade for Higgins at these values, I think he's a good buy. It feels it feels a lot like T. Higgins is being punished for missing time. As he should. He's a fucking cone. But now we're time, past like it. Now it's like it's – he's either going to be limited this week in practice or he's going to be a full participant. I, like I, that's it. I guess I think part of the sentiment is that I don't know – can we say that he's past it? Like – it seems like with T. Higgins, he's never passed it. That, that, that's super fair. The re-injury. I'm, I'm just expecting him to play this week, maybe 75%, and then be 100% going forward. I Because so. I, I think, honestly, that's baked into part of the, the hate is, like, people are genuinely – sometimes he, you don't even know. He's, he's supposed to play. He's not allowed to play. He goes out for one play. Like, he's had a lot of weird injury games. So, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit more pessimistic on T. I'm taking Brian Robinson, I think, over all those guys. Though, we too. all buying. We all Brian buying Robinson is a – I mean, listen, I know – the Giants are terrible, and then with Tampa the week prior, uh, maybe that defense up front's not very good, so it could be a good situation. To be fair, he didn't have a very strong ground game against Tampa. He, he just had not. a good through the, through the air. Yep. But I mean, I'm just saying maybe we look back and the, the, he had two friendlier matchups, but I think with this offense, there's nothing that I want in the passing game because all I really want is Jaden Daniels, Brian Robinson, and if I had to, on like a best ball only, I'd Hey, Eckler. say what you want to say about Cliff. James Conner looked good under Cliff. B-Rob's looking good under Cliff. He might he might give you a little bit in the running back game. Okay, that's fair. Let's I mean, you're spreading out the entire line, put the receivers all over the place, and like there's no one in the front seven. But that running back, exactly. Hell yeah! All right, let's talk about the scary hours, man. Let's get there. Scary let's talk hours? about scary hours. About uh, we talked about Cooper last week, so we're gonna move past that. Tank Dell, wide receiver, 34 right now. Damn, how, how scary hours was gonna be Amari Cooper, but we'll, <laughs> we'll pass. That. That's why I said I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> But I think we talked about him last week. Well, yeah, we did. Flip him. Bye, bye. What is that, Adam? Bye, bye. Buys across the board. Three buys. I mean, I don't know. This is pretty easy to me. Let I, me. Um, I'll just. I, mine's very simple. He's still getting targets. I know he's the number three option technically in this offense. This offense is so good. It's so fast paced. There's so much uh, receiving work to go around. The big games are coming. I'm willing to buy low if people are panicked. Facts. It's like hasn't connected yet, but CJ Stroud is just so accurate that the games are coming. He's also had a weirdly high uncatchable target rate, as we were talking about in the rankings video. It's like really, really low compared to the other receivers, which won't be the case going forward. Let me ask you guys this. I don't remember if I put it in the chat the other day, but I just moved Alvin Kamara in Dynasty for Tank Dell. Mm. Half PPR. I mean one more time, one more time. I just moved Alvin Kamara in a dynasty league for Tank Dell. I'm more than happy with the Dell side. Yeah, I mean, long term in just dynasty overall value is Tank Dell. I mean, yeah. You're so much more flexible, I think, in future trades too. I, I just do think that Alvin Kamara, whether you like it or not, is going to be really good in fantasy still for a for minute. sure for a minute for sure. I think it was more of a minute, like like multiple years bro, still. When why is it? 
the sediment is is the same every year. It is, but it's not really. Changing. It really is. Like I don't <laughs> really know how fucking I, is. I, you see that con- that that is why Alvin Kamara is going to be good for a well, minute because everyone's writing him off every year. I've been trying to move him for Dude. fucking a year and a half in that league. So you're telling me that in the off season when he's 30 and everybody's like. Fuck Alvin Kamara. I don't want him on my team. This is exactly what happened this offseason. I need to buy him. The reason, like, in Dynasty, the flexibility is, okay, if Alvin Kamara gets hurt tomorrow, that asset is dead. Correct. Tank Dell's already in, like, a down spot in his situation. Mm -hmm. So, you only have up to gain with Tank Dell, but everything to lose with Kamara. Me, Tank Dell's a screaming buy in, in, in redraft, though. I, I like him a lot. In I think in Dynasty redraft any format he's well, a buy probably if, if, right now. With a guy of his archetype and his age, if he's a if he's a buy in redraft, he's a great buy in Dynasty too. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's move to number five, Jamar Chase. We did not talk about him last week. I, I'm kind of surprised to see. I know we had the other video where Ooh. I had him at ten. I feel like I wasn't being overly. Re- I, I'm still very in on Chase. I'm a little bit more concerned than probably the average person. I'm surprised he's being traded this often, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think people are freaking out. They're they're freaking out about Joe Burrow and, and the offense overall, and when like. I mean, when he's your first round pick and he hasn't put up, you know, like an 80 yard game or scoring touchdowns, people start to kind of panic. This also feels like uh, in, in the same way that the Bengals start off every year really slow, like Chase starts off, I feel like kind of kind of slow each year, too, as they don't really well, perform the, that well. The knock has been that Burrow is a slow burn, too, every year. So you would think that with Burrow and the Bengals and Chase in general, everybody's a little bit slow to start yeah. the year. But I got hold. Yeah, um, I didn't change it, but I'm also a hold here. I'll buy. Okay, let's talk about this. Try to be actionable. I don't know how actionable you can be. I, I think anybody would love to still buy Chase. And or, I mean, there's probably people panicking, but what realistically can you trade? If I want to go out and get Jamar Chase right now, let's say I want to buy this panic. What does that actually look like? So would you give up Jameer Gibbs, Jameer Gibbs and uh, Christian Watson for Chase? Yes. Would you give up? I'm not so sure. Maybe. Jameer Gibbs. Christian Watson's like such a non. Yeah, yeah he is. And it has nothing to do with Watson, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Jameer Gibbs and um, I don't know who's like a the thirtieth receiver. Jameer Gibbs and Calvin Ridley. Jameer Gibbs and uh, Jameer Gibbs and Jalen Waddle. Yeah, probably. Okay, you wouldn't. I'm not sold on it, but it, it, in the right situation, I would do that. Yes. Let Let me ask you guys this because they're back to back, like neck and neck on fantasy calc. Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase. I'm taking Chase there. Because we have the I'm quarterback. I'm selling Hill for Chase. Yeah. Because Hill's above Chase right now. Yeah, I don't think I'm most people Ty- would I'm do that. I'm taking Tyreek. You are? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. AJ Brown? I mean, I, I was taking, for the record, I was taking Tyreek ahead of Jamar Chase before. I, I, I'd much rather Tua. I'm not going to act like that's not yeah. a downgrade. But I, they're going to manufacture touches for him anyway. Yeah. I'm that's just, fair. Yeah. I'm just more confident in Chase for the next six weeks. Are you taking Chase or AJ Brown? I think I'm going to go Chase. Yeah, I'm trying to think because I have A.J. Brown in our league. Like, if the Chase offer came into my inbox, I think I'm probably going to accept that. Yeah. Because, I mean, A.J. Brown's hurt. We don't know if he's going to be gone for another week, two weeks. If A.J. Brown was healthy, I think it's a conversation. A.J. Brown already, we know, is going to miss this week. If A.J. Brown's healthy, I'm going to take him over Jamar Chase. I agree. Okay. But not, but But right now with the uncertainty, yeah, like every week matters to us, you know? So I'm like, I'm probably going to take Chase. Those are kind of the guys in the range. So, like, it sounds like based on the guys around him, Hill. Brown, Wilson, kind but, of a buy in that tier. But like I'm saying, so far the names we've talked about to me are not panic trades. These are these are very similar players. Yeah, those are always guys that were like drafted right. below Chase. Right. To your anyways. point, like uh, what were the players you named now? Tyreek Hill, AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson. Are you giving up Bijan for Jamar Chase? I don't think so. Bijan is above Chase in these rankings by. A I'm asking amount. you. Um, nah, no, I wouldn't. Not giving up Bijan for Chase. No, I think Bijan is actually him. <laughs> no, he just doesn't score touchdowns like, ever yet. Kind of he might not need to. Um, yeah, he hasn't needed to yet, to be honest. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying as we talk more and more about this, though, like that thing come over here. I'm just like, I, there's a lot of players I'm I'm still gonna take over Chase that we're talking about, and then <laughs> there's, it's not like I think Garrett Wilson maybe is would be uh, one, but I don't know. That's what I think, but I, that doesn't feel like you're bu- you're able to. No one, I don't think, is selling Chase for Garrett Wilson right now. But that's my point. If you like, can, though. What does that actually look like? What does <laughs> yeah. the panic look like? I, I, that's I think it's, I think it's a this. duo of players. That's why I think it's like a Jonathan Taylor, and maybe that's even a, like an even a trade. A tear down type thing. Yeah, like a tear down with a lesser player or something like that. Maybe you're trying to buy like a, you know, one of the underperforming tight ends, like a Sam Laporta or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I guess a package deal is probably what makes more sense. I, I think most likely if you own Chase, just like don't panic and you just have to keep rolling him out every week. And eventually at the end of the year, he will just get to where... You wanted him to is there, and, uh, is there a point in which you do panic? Let me ask you guys that. I'm going to panic if he doesn't perform this week against Washington a little bit. Yeah, because okay. I, th- I think my expectation, obviously based on my rankings this sure. week, is that the big game is here. What does I'll, the big I'll game say, look like? What I'll do you need say, to see? I'll say this. If they don't do it against Washington this week, 
I'm going to assume that Joe Burrow is not right. That's that's where the... Like, I'm trying to actually make the storyline of why. Like, I'm not just going to panic for the sake of panicking. Yeah. If you can't do it against this Washington team that every team is just tearing up, when is you just have to assume something's kind of funky with Joe Burrow. What do I need to see from Chase this yeah. week? What does is, what is the, like, get-right game look like? like what what, what do you need to see, see to be, like, oh, six or eighty. Uh, he needs to get in the end zone. I was going to say six or eight catches, 80 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, 685 and a touchdown feels good for Chase. What if he gives you the same? What if he gives you six and eighty? No TD. Uh, I'm not as worried because the touchdowns they come and go, but I I need to see the yardage go up. I need to see the receptions come up. I I think the big thing I would like to see is them them decide to get just we're giving him the rock. Like we're gonna give this guy twelve yes, targets. And I need yeah. to see I need to see the big play chase come back out. I would love to see that too. I just feel like the the thing I'm weirdly concerned about is this is a guy that's not happy. He's vocally not happy, and we're not giving him targets. Him and Burrow yeah, are chirping weird. each other on the field. Yeah, I mean, I need, I need, I need like 300, 325 from Burrow against his Washington defense. If Burrow goes out there and throws for like two ten, and Chase goes like six eighty, I'm like, okay. Yeah, Did what you are we guys doing? see that? Did you make anything of that at all? When him and Burrow kind of got into it on the football field? Nah, nah. they've been playing I'm together not, for I'm six not, years. I'm not making That's much of that right, because, yeah. Of yeah, this is like if. You know, randomly we had like a Saint like Mahomes conversation. We're we're cool. Like Saint like Mahomes and Xavier Worthy who were playing together for five seconds. You know, yeah. It's like I'm Mahomes. I just thought enough. it was they made something about it on the broadcast because obviously Chase a little upset not getting his money, and then now he's out here going crazy on the football field with yeah. Joe Burrow. I mean, yeah. We're we'll talking about going crazy on the football field here. The last player that we're gonna talk about on this list in particular is Mr. J.K. Dobbins, the single most traded player on the list. I mean, if I don't have wow. him, I'm buying. If I have him, I'm holding. I have him as a hold. What does a buy look like for Dobbins? A buy, a buy looks like a top 20. Okay, realistically, maybe Drake London is a buy for J.K. Dobbins. Wow. I'm going to go cop. I think you have to. They're both probably... J.K. Dobbins has far outperformed him. He has. In fantasy. And I think, like, if you're looking at Dobbins as anything besides a top 20, top 15 fantasy wider, uh, fi- running back going forward, I feel like you're fooling yourself. If you're looking at Drake, Drake London as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver going forward, I kind of think you're fooling yourself, too. I, I have hold sell. Like, okay. So here's the names. Yeah. Dobbins or Pollard? Dobbins. I kind of like Pollard. I like Pollard a lot, too. Dobbins or David Montgomery? Dobbins. I think I like Monty. Um, oh, my God. Really close there. This Monty thing's going to kill me this year. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up fighting somebody. Dobbins or Zay Flowers? Zay. Zay. This is why I'm, I'm, we're going we're gonna to have a – I can't wait to fight people this year. Like, Dobbins has had a great couple weeks. Yeah. I'm convinced that these two defenses are not very good, first and foremost. I, that's what I was going to get to. I, and, and, and not and the just Carolina that. Panthers. Like, I also, as, as great as it is, and I want to see – I love seeing this. I've been a Dobbins fan. I, I feel like the more and more we see him get work is the more and more concerned I am that he continues to stay healthy, too. Uh, I, that, that might not be something if that you people, got If you got real health concerns for him, I understand that. But I also think that, like, this <clears> – <throat> Chargers run offense is obviously legit. Yeah, for sure. Andy Reid says Kareem Hunt could play here in week three. Okay. That's what, yeah. That suck. I thought, I, yeah. I, th- I thought you saw a report that said he wasn't. That's why I was a little, like, yeah, I guess a little bit surprised. Yeah, they said that he wasn't expected to be activated, but now hmm. they just, in just since we started recording this, they've activated Keontae Ingram, and they said that they might activate Kareem. Jeez, okay. I mean, here, here's the thing. It's like this run offense, they clearly want to run the ball. They're not letting Herbert really throw the ball. For yep. sure. And... There's a good reason for it because their D is great and their offensive line, all and Slater like anchoring the outside is incredible. Dobbins has shown way more burst than we thought. He can't like finish runs, but actually, I mean, I guess he did finish a big big run last time. The holes they're opening up are massive. Yeah, and like Dobbins is explosive enough to get through them. And I think like the more that they just feed Gus Edwards and see how lackluster he is, uh, the more opportunity. Dobbins is going to end up getting in that offense. It, it doesn't seem fluky to me outside no. of whether or not he's going to stay healthy. No, I, 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 it's it's not fluky. The reason I say hold is because, like, all right, if we're talking about week one, I think the buy window potentially was like he's to be had still. Yeah. I think not, we are now to the solidified point, I think, with JK where you're kidding yourself if you don't think this is – if you think it's fluky, it's not fluky, right? But I think he's now to the point where you're talking about some of these pivots where I'm, I'm kind of de-risking stuff. Like, Zay, yes. Zay Flowers is a – it's a pretty nice option, man. Yes. You know, like there's, I, I'm basically saying at this point, the reason I, I have him as a holder sell is it's going to be dependent on what I can do. If I can get, like, if I can kind of cash out on Dobbins for a, a guy that I think has his own range of upside and I don't have the, I, I still think there's a lot of risk for if he's going to play a full season. The, the efficiency sure. metrics for Dobbins are off the charts, unsustainable or unsustainable. Yeah, sure. He's like just breaking off big runs. It's not like he is averaging 9.9 yards per carry. That is, 266 yards, leading the NFL in rushing right now. Joe Alt elite. That is 27 mm-hmm. attempts 
The next guys behind him, 48 attempts, 48 attempts, 46 attempts, 46 attempts, all those guys averaging anywhere between four and a half and five yards per carry. He has doubled them on half the attempts. Sure. Now, I mean, look, I don't think anyone, even if you're saying J.K. looks great and all that, and you're on his side, I don't think anyone's saying he's going to continue to average seven ten or ten yard a carry. <laughs> right. But So even if that comes down, though, like, if J.K. does play, stay healthy this whole time, right? In this offense, I think you, you could definitely make the case, though, that he's still worth having, which is why I'm, I'm not going to sell unless I can get someone that I really like. That's why I have a hold, but I, I think there is an actual argument, like you said, Adam, where we're talking about Zay Flowers, we're talking about... Go, go, go back to just running backs, because we had, we had the, the Pollard uh, conversation. You said Pollard. Pollard, Monty, uh, above him a little bit more is is Stevenson. James Conner is above him. Um, below him is B-Rob. Below him is Jordan Mason. See, I think he, he's already – that's my, kind of my point. He's already reached a pretty damn good tier. Yeah. A safe tier. He's reached a good tier. I, my, I guess my, my thing with – coming into the year, these are the backfields that you want to target, right? Yeah. These, like, unopen or unknown backfields. And it's not like Dobbins came to prominence through an injury, right? Like, Dobbins came to dominance because of how good he's fucking playing. And that feels like you earn a lot of uh, trust. And you got to remember, Greg Roman's there. Yep. who was the coordinator in Baltimore when they drafted Dobbins. And, like, he really likes Dobbins. They obviously Remember how much he was using him down the stretch that rookie Do- year? Dobbins was, until he kept getting hurt, was him for them. They, right. they view him that way. Exactly. And I, and I think that, like, the upside is that of a guy who gets 15 to 18 touches in one of the league's best running offenses. I, I, they could be a team that wins 10, 10 games. And, like, if you're, if you're the best running back in a team that wins 10 games, that's – run heavy like there's not that big of a difference between what I guess Baltimore was at that time and what the Chargers are right now outside of a, a very mobile quarterback no there isn't actually that's where I still put hold because I I do still think it all the risk is uh, I have associated he still has upside that's rare yeah extremely rare yeah I mean we'll see when they play Pittsburgh <laughs> this week like that just might be a, a tough I mean team the, to get going against but this guy coming off Achilles it literally is Two back-to-back hundred-plus yard games and is going his workload's going up. So yeah, if he's a freak of nature and he stays healthy, I mean, who knows? Who knows? I'm rooting for him, but I'm probably holding or selling. (laughs) The upside's crazy, though. I'll give you that. Yep. All right. Well, that wraps up that list. Anyone else we want to just shout out quickly? We talked about it a few times already today. Uh, George Pickens is on my buy list. I I just I like. Yeah, I just in, in full PPR, I just sent Rashad White for him. Uh, he's the one. He, he's a guy coming off of like a low box score game, right? Two for twenty nine. Yep. Shadowed by Patrick Sertan, but if you watch the game, a lot of points left onto the field because of flags, penalties, all that kind of stuff. His separation score so far through the season has been incredible. He's really progressed into like a, a, a wide receiver one that's getting 32 percent of the targets in that offense. I fully agree. I don't really have anything else to add to that. I was Dub me. I'm going to ask you guys a just a generic question that I think is. I'm curious what your takes are. What what where where are you at with like the tight end position in general right now? And like what are you doing with some of your teams? Do you have any good tight ends? Do you have a target at tight end, or are you just just don't care, don't want to talk about it, like the, just ignoring what's happening? For me, I feel like all of the good, you know, the tight ends that we drafted highly, the Kelseys, the Andrews, all of these guys, they're holds. We're not selling any of those guys. You drafted them to be elite. It's ups and downs, whatever, whatever. I think if there was a clear guy in that elite group that I have been very impressed with to start the year that I am confident in. Trey McBride. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually a little bit less impressed than I thought I would be. Really? He's he's putting well, up good numbers for sure. Very high expectations, I think. Right. And and I would put him as number one in that group right now, but I don't know. Like he's catching passes like six for sixty was like his good game last week. He did recover a fumble that really shouldn't have been his, yeah. but that helps for fantasy, I guess. I guess the hold part here is the thing that I feel like makes the most sense because everyone's like, Oh, you want a good tight end because it gives you a positional advantage. It's like Okay, well, just everyone's bad. No one has a positional advantage right now, so you just kind of keep rolling out the guys that you think are going to play well. Like George Kill, I think, is probably, you know, someone that I like this offseason because he's going to give you the good games, the bad games, and now with Debo and Christian McCaffrey hurt, like he's going to continue probably rolling up some big target games. And I think the thing with Kittle is, like, everyone talks about the inconsistency, and I almost feel like that's fine because the Niners are one of the teams that game plan really well. So when they go into a week, they're like, this is going to be a McCaffrey and Debo week, or this, and we're going to ask Kittle to block on 65% of the plays. This is going to be a Kittle week. So it's like, sure, he's going to be inconsistent, but you know they're going to be weeks that they actually dial up for him. No, that, that's actually, I, I think that's one of the best things about Kittle. I prefer him to be inconsistent. I know that sounds crazy, but okay. I'd, much, I'd much rather th- I want the twenty point week. That's right. gonna win me a week. Yeah. The other stuff just gets muddled. I think I don't know. It's I know it's two weeks. I don't want to be overly into the the freak out here. But do you know right now, like if you had to guess, how many tight ends have ten targets or more 
at this point in the season. So it's literally five a game right now like we're talking about. Hunter Henry, because he got 12 last week. It's got to be like, what, four? Four guys. Probably uh, Zach Ertz has 10 or more right now. Yeah, maybe like Dolchich seven. Dolchich actually sneaky. He makes it seven. But so Dolchich is in there? Dolchich has 11 targets. You could have told me he didn't play this year yet. <laughs> I would have fucking believed I'm going to give you, you the numbers as they're real. But he, here's what I'm going to – we get to tight end 13. Noah Fant has seven targets tied for tight end 13. Like, there, there's targets – that's – Three and a half a game. It always basically you have you have the three. haves or haves nots as far as even targets that give you a chance to be good right now. Yep. Yeah, it's bad. This whole position is scaring the living shit out of me. All right, give me give me uh do this on a zero to one scale. Okay, just like do we feel good about them going forward rest of the year or do we feel bad about them? The tight ends. Yes, Sam Laporta. One is good. Zero is bad. I feel zero. Okay, three. It's zero, a zero, zero to one or, scale. Oh, zero to one scale. Correct. I guess zero. Okay. I, I'm actually okay. Laporta's like a buy for me because he was so hyped and he's done so poorly that like he would be someone I'd be targeting in that bottom tier because unlike Kelsey, where I'm like, he just looks old and slow and I don't know that I feel good about him coming out. Like Laporta will have his weeks. So I, Laporta's a guy I'd be okay with. Laporta's, the reason I'm scared about Laporta though is he, Laporta might be a little bit at the expense of JMO if he's going to continue these type of targets. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point because JMO's really emerged so that, that will eat up into his target share. Laporta, all right, Kelsey, zero or one? Zero. Zero. Yep. Um, Andrews. One. Zero. Okay. Um, Trey McBride. We're one. one. Who's the fifth? Kincaid. One? Kincaid. Uh, I mean, I w- yeah, I was going to get to that, Andrew. One. Not. Mm. It's like 0.65 right now, but it's one. I was <laughs> the, I was going to get to this, and, I'm, and, you, and you had to answer that way. Why? What What makes you confident in Kincaid right now? The hope. Other than you like that, it's going to get better, and there's no other receiving threats really there other than zero. Dalton Dal- Dal- Kincaid, get better. Dal- Kincaid is uh, on the closer to negative, if I can go that way. <laughs> his, I'm not his like usage is fine, but like they're not using him. I'm not selling him though. I, I guess I the the problem is like the Buffalo Bills team is so good. All they do is run the ball and play defense. It's like they don't need to throw the ball more than 20 times a game. I, I guess actually that's kind of why I'm talking about this in general. Is it they're not up there, but. If you can find someone in your league that still believes that the tight end position is going to give you a positional advantage and is going to make you better than everybody else, that's the person I want to trade with right now. Just don't exist. I, I'm just saying if they do, yeah. if that, if you find that unicorn, yeah, I want to give you – Andrew, I want to give you your Dalton Kincaid. All right. I'll take it. One more. Kyle Pitts. Zero. I thought we all loved him after week one. I did too. Uh, he had a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Don't care. Here. I need to know. <laughs> what, <laughs> I need answers. Okay, Zero. Bro- <laughs> okay, what about Brock Bowers though? One. I mean, one. He five, looks great. Five. Yeah. Most people are putting Brock as like a top two tight end going forward. Brock looks like. Which I feel like is. He looks like the elite tight end right now. Maybe. He does. Can you be an elite tight end without scoring touchdowns? Uh, When you're in a PPR league. When the entire league isn't sure. getting. When isn't the entire league doesn't targets. score touchdowns. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I'm, I'll throw one name out because you got to throw one out. I'll throw one in. We can go quickly. Buy, sell, hold. Shahid. Shahid has been over exceeding the expectations, I think, from drafters. Is it legit? Buy, sell, hold. I think for a lot of the names, because you mentioned him uh, similarly with uh, like Higgins that? and yeah, I, I think for a lot of the names he's getting to, I'm probably going to sell him. I, I love him. I, I, I'm probably most teams going to hold him, but if I can actually trade in that tier, I'm going to sell. I'll, I'll go through that name, the list one more time. I want some real life trades of what Same. Shahid is going for because the, Shahid's such a tough one because it's like you want to sell him because of the big plays, but then it's like people, it's 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 kind of one of those like you know that I know that you know kind of thing, and I yeah. like I don't know where that actually lands. I know in where you I know where we're going with this. Let's yeah. let's okay. let's do it. This or that. We'll just go through the list. I'll go like a couple above and a couple below. Okay. Uh, Calvin Ridley, Shahid. Ridley. Yeah, I think I would probably land on Ridley too. Dell Shahid. Dell. Dell. Terry McLaurin. Shahid. Shahid. Jackson Smith and Jigba. JSN. I like this new JSN a lot. Sixteen targets. I know, but like, is, is, is that the new she? Is that the new JSN? Yeah, even if that comes a little bit down. Like, listen. if JSN had a sixteen target week one, he would have been the wide receiver three in fantasy for sure. Like his trade value would have been fucking he's, insane. But instead, he had what one catch for sixteen yards. He is he's is the quietest. 16 target game, maybe in the history of pick. fantasy football. You got to pick. What was it again? JSN Shahid or Shahid? or JSN. Gun to your head right now. Pick one. I'll take JSN. Yeah, boy. Okay. What else? Uh, Cooper. Who? Mari Cooper. <sighs> Mari Coop. You're, you're hurting me here. Shahid. I think I might do it. I'm going to take Shahid there. I, I, might, I, I, I might have to take Shahid. Keenan Allen? <sighs> like, what the fuck is Keenan Allen? What is he? What is he there? What is the Chicago pet? Yeah, I'm taking Shahid. If you're taking him over Amari Cooper, I, please don't. Take Keenan Allen. I'm yeah, no, no, no. And then last, I just like, is he ever going to get on the you. field? What's Brian Thomas Jr. Same picture, Brian Thomas Jr. Though I'm gonna take. I think I might take BTJ. Yeah, the so qu- he's a sell. The reason the reason I take BTJ is I, I trust the quarterback long term for the season a little bit better. I just feel like the majority of the guys that we listed, you guys took the other. Yeah, guy. I, 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 I might take so. Shahid actually over BTJ. Dub. Okay, so lean into it. You. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll, I'll have him as a hold. Cool. I'll keep throwing him in my flex spot. I hope he catches a seventy yard danger. The yeah, one week he, week. the one week he has though. Here's the thing: Alave hasn't eaten yet, really, right? Well, the big Alave game and the one dud week for Rashid Shahid is going to be a little bit of a freak. It's yeah. going to be a freak, freak out. But also, okay, so Alave hasn't eaten yet, but like the big game, like how often are we expecting that? I, I'm not saying that I do expect him to eat. Like I think everyone's waiting for that game and that that to come for him. So I, yeah, I think like a five for a hundred and a touchdown is probably on the horizon. But if that happens like once every three weeks, I don't, I don't know how much that really eats into Shahid. And like I said, like Carr's not really throwing the ball that much. I was gonna say, so when he does have like a high volume passing game, we, we could see an eight, nine, ten target I game. I think Shahid is legit. Um, but I think in the tier of guys that are around him right there, I think there's just a lot more safety with similar ceilings <laughs> in those guys. I mean, Derek Carr also has thrown five touchdowns in two weeks. I, that I don't expect to stay there. Uh, that's a lot of Shahid's play is touchdown dependent maybe. Five more this week against Philly. He has nine I, targets I, this year, but his target share is 24%, which is a huge number because Carr hasn't needed to throw the ball. When they're in shootouts and they're playing against teams where they need to throw the ball, a 24% target share is going to see double those numbers. I think that actually is the – I think that's actually the scary part is we don't have – I still feel like we don't have enough sample size with this current offense to where is he going to be gadgety or is he, like, legit target I think volume? he's a much better player than just a gadget player. You know what? I, I, I don't disagree. I'm saying I don't know where we're going to see the usage correlate to that uh, over the long haul. He's got a higher target share than Terry McLaurin does right now. Dub. You know what? The kids from Weber State, I'm buying. We're back up. in. It's from Weber State. How did I forget that? I, anyone that makes Obviously you Weber State. <laughs> We we were states Vegas. No, that's where I went to college in Utah. Oh, it's Utah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Dame. Me and Dame uh, time. me and Shahid at school at the same time. I watched him play at Weber. Really? So, yeah. so Rashid, Shahid, you, as you're watching this, what's up? You know, shout out Weber State. Shout out Weber State. Shout out you for hanging out this long. If you did so, that's gonna wrap up the trade video for this week. If you enjoyed, hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we'll see y'all on uh, Saturday for the Cune Assaults. You are a big dog S- member. Moochies. I-